Hello, so today I'm going to do the other tutorial that I said I would do, which is a speed pull tutorial. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to make the track from start to finish, and I'm going to commentate as I go, and each section, each uh, video will show a different part of the process. So we're going to start with the melody. So because melodic speed call is the name of this genre, you've got to have a nice melody. So grab a serum, and we can start making a lead. So first thing you always want to do with leads is make them nice and fat. So start with saws, then. One trick that I learned from a friend, he's a really good speaker producer, his name is Lifer, go check him out. One thing I learned is putting sync on maximum and then turning down the octave by 4. It makes the sound slightly, slightly dirtier, but still keeps that kind of saw sound, which I think is pretty cool. And I'm going to have the other also. So one thing I do like is to use this shape of saw, which is basically a regular saw, but it's got this notch in the middle. So the way you can create this in the editor is to put this small, these two small numbers next to the grid, put them to 1, that will, and then use the saw wave tool to create the saw. Then turn the vertical one up a bit, as well as the horizontal one. It's important that you put the horizontal one on an even number, and then just make the step. So now we've got a basic sound. Then you can start processing that. I like to start with uh, just a little distortion. You don't want to go overboard with distorting at the start because these, these leads with unison tend to get quite muddy if you distort them too much. So after that, good old compressor. And then I'll just name it. I like to name everything and color everything. Leads always green for me. And control L links it to the first available mix channel. And then we can start adding more effects there. So uh, not that. <coughs> so Shaverbox is a really nice plugin for distorting leads because unlike the serum distortion it doesn't create as much of the muddy sound so put it on multiband mode if you don't have shaper box then uh, any multiband distortion will do but as far as I know there aren't any free multiband distortions so but you probably can skip a step and still have a decently sound a decently good sounding lead, but this just adds a tiny bit of extra. So, oops, not that. So, you can hear how that adds just a bit of extra high. And now you hear when I turn this mid up all the way, you hear that weird phasing sound. That's caused by the different uh, unisons conflicting with the distortion, so you don't want to have that too much, but then you still want distortion. That's why this high being separate is good, because the high doesn't create the same amount of phasing sound, so you can turn that up as much as you want. Then low, don't need to touch low, because we're going to cut that out anyway. Then distortion time, I just use soft clip for leads, because we don't need to do anything crazy. It's just the lead. Then I create a bus. 
So we're going to link all of the leads to this, uh, starting with this one. So next, another lead. Going to name it, color it. So for the second lead, I like to do uh, a lead that's going to stand right in the middle of the mix, right in the middle of the stereo. I mean. So this lead is going to be uh, not not unison, and, it's, and because there's no unison, we can distort it a bit more. Zero square is one of my favorite distortions. It basically just makes everything into a square wave, but that's fine. Let's add a filter. The filter on here depends. For some leads, I'd like to use a normal low pass filter, but then because we're doing speed core, I can afford to be a bit crazier. There we go. Turn on key tracking. Oh, one thing I did forget on this is turn on the portamento. The saw leads portamento is a pretty nice, pretty nice effect. So at the moment this lead still doesn't sound like much, but it's compression. Then using the random knob, I'll turn it all the way down because again it's going to be a lead that stands in the middle of the mix, so we can play around with that because this messes up unison quite a lot. But if you're not using unison, it affects how the two waves work together in phase. As you can see here, it does sound a little weird. And there we go, that fixed it. Just make sure that both oscillators are going through the filter. And that's linked to the bus already. So because this is a tutorial, I'll probably add the other layers off camera, but both of them are basically, all of the future leads are basically just going to be some iteration of this lead. I might shift it up a, or down an octave, or change up the amount of unison and detune slightly, but usually when I'm layering leads, it's always just an iteration of this. So you can make these in pretty much the same way. So we're going to move on now to the melody. So writing melodies can be sometimes tricky, but then other times it's really not. Like sometimes I'll be stuck on a melody for days, but other times I'll just think a melody off out of thin air and be like, oh wow, let's make a track out of this. So if you don't have any idea of how to move, of what to do for a melody, Good idea is to go and find tracks by artists you like, for example, Cabario, and then just look at a few of their tracks, and then hopefully you should be able to get some inspiration from those. Um, but if not, then just Choosing a scale and playing around with the notes in that scale is a good way to start. Okay, let's just choose the scale of F minor. If you don't know a scale, there's a pretty easy way to check. You don't have to pay for any MIDI chord packs or whatever. Yeah, what you can do is just go into View, then Scale Highlighting, then you can choose the type of scale you want. Minor natural is generally a safe bet to go for, either that or minor harmonic. And then go back into the menu and choose the note that you want the scale to be in. So let's choose F. There we go. 
So I'm going to just make a melody, probably fast forward this and then see you later when the melody is finished. So, we've got this so far. So now we're going to add the lower section of the melody. So to do that, it's quite simple. You just take any of the long notes, cut them in half, and then Place uh, notes around one octave lower that sound good with it. So, a good example would be this one. This is an octave apart because they're both F. But then sometimes you can keep staying with this note, other times you can use other notes. It depends on the melody. So, you should just go along it as your placing the notes in and listen and see which notes sound best. So at this point, once you've finished all of the lower notes, sounds like this. You may want to change the portamento, depending on how it sounds, which I will do because I think the portamento is just a bit too long. So I'll just change the other one to roughly match it, there we go. And now I can copy this to the other one. So now that you've got a melody you can start processing the leads in the bus. So the reason why I like to process the leads in the bus after I make the melody is because the processing that's done in this part does depend a lot on the melody because certain melodies will need different amounts of delay and different amounts of reverb. Reverb and delay are the two main ones that are affected by the type of the melody. For example, a slower paced melody might want a slightly higher amount of reverb and delay to fill in the gaps, whereas a higher, pass, a higher paced one like this doesn't need as much. The first thing you want to do is get a balance and turn it down because it's kind of loud. Uh, so let's get that volume down and now we can start adding the other plugins. So the first thing to do is to compress them together with a compressor. So, pump a compressor, but the default fruity compressor also can work here. There we go. Uh, 
and then we can start the delay and reverb. For delay, I like Valhalla Supermassive. Well, firstly, because my sister is one of the modes, and secondly, because it just sounds better than Fruity Delay while being free, because free stuff is always good. So you can see there's quite a lot on the preset that I set as default. This isn't the default preset that it sets when you first install the plugin, this is just what I set as the default. I'm pretty sure the factory default is like Gemini with some high, higher mix level and stuff. But I set this as the default because this is the preset that I like to use on hardstyle leads. But because we're making speed pool, uh, the, everything's slightly faster, so you want a bit less delay and a bit less reverb. So we're going to just turn that down a bit and increase the density. Yep, that sounds good. Also remember to keep an eye on the feedback knob because that controls how many times the echo will echo. If that makes sense. Because <laughs> if it's too high, it's just going to be echoing forever. Don't want that, so turn that down. You can see that, or well, you can hear, have I been saying you can see this whole time? Oh dear. Yeah, you can hear that the echoes fade out more quickly. And then density controls how soon it turns into reverb. But on the Lyra setting, it doesn't really affect it that much. Like you can hear you can hear it still sounds like a delay, so I don't really know what that does with Lyra, but I know for the other more high density settings it pretty much turns the delay into a reverb, which can be pretty cool, but I don't really know the ins and outs of that. Speaking of reverb, here we have a fruity reverb. Just plain and simple, I do like the fruity reverb. Again, not too much reverb because Speed core is fast, so there's going to be stuff playing all the time. Also, big room size. I usually use big room sizes. And you want to have a fairly consistent room size for all of the sounds in your track that you put reverb on. So just keeping it large, I'd say, is generally the way to go. So after that, EQ. So you want to cut just before the red area. That will remove all of the sounds below this red area, which you can't hear anyway which frees up room for the other parts of the track, such as the kick, the bass, and other low-end stuff. So next we're going to add OTT. OTT is a very strong compressing plugin. It's a multi-band compressor, and a lot of producers use it. It smooths out the frequencies and makes sure everything is sounding tighter and cleaner. So you don't really need to change the settings that much. I usually either leave it on the default or slightly turn up either the mids or the highs. But not much change to be need, to be made. You can also hear it slightly emphasize the delay tail, which is pretty cool. So now the final thing is 
Tower Crusher. Rit is clean. Super good. Plug in to put on the end of chains, I think. Because it just compresses everything at the end and adds a tiny bit of distortion. need to adjust the amount of the compressor because it does get very clicky sometimes and that is really annoying in my opinion. So I just change that. And there you go, lead's done. Never gonna do